My name is Chris from the Hypro Service Department and today I'll be showing you how to disassemble and reassemble a 7560 XL. Some of the necessary tools required for working on a roller pump include bearing tools, a socket for the bolts, something to push out your bearings with, and a cradle to support the housing. You also need a hammer, a file, and a measuring tool. After removing the coupler, you'll want to file off any burrs that may be left over on the shaft. Next we'll remove the bearing dust covers. Then we'll remove our bolts from the cover. And now we're ready to press it apart. Now that we've pressed the pump apart, I can see the inside of the housing and also remove the rollers. Now we're ready to press the shaft and rotor assembly out of the cover. Using another cradle and either a shaft from another pump or one of the bolts from the cover, we can use that to remove the shaft and rotor assembly. Now that we've removed the shaft and rotor assembly, we can use the same cradle and the bearing tool to remove the bearings and push that through the seal and then press the bearing out. And then use the other cradle and the same bearing tool to remove it from this side. And there again, press it through the seal and press your bearing up. Now we're ready to remove the seal. Take the flat blade of a screwdriver and place it against the inside of the steel casing of the seal and tap it out with a hammer. Now we'll remove the seal from the other housing. There again, that steel casing on the seal you want to place your screwdriver against the inside of that casing, tap it out with a hammer. The o-ring can be removed with a small screwdriver. Now that we've completely disassembled the pump, we can look at some of the parts for typical signs of wear. The first thing we'll look at is the inside of this housing. Roughly a sixteenth of an inch from the edge, you want to look for a lip. That is a sign of pretty extreme wear. The next thing you want to look for is signs of wear on the cover in the roller area. The next thing we'll want to look at is we need to measure the thickness of the rotor and this needs to be 1.4995 at the very smallest. This measures out at 1.4800, so this rotor is no good. That will need to be replaced. Also, the rollers will need to be measured, and the same tolerance applies to these. They need to be no smaller than 1.4995, and you can see that this is 1.472. That's a worn out roller that will need to be replaced. Also, another thing to look for is wear in the seal area on the shaft. If it's worn or pitted, the shaft needs to be replaced. A new seal will not make a seal on a shaft that's worn. Now we're ready to reassemble the pump. The repair kit includes the two seals, the rollers, and the o-ring for the cover. 
first thing we'll do is install the new seals. Make sure that your new seal has the spring inside and you'll want to install it facing this way. Use your seal tool to press it in until you feel it bottom out. On the other casting, to install the other seal, make sure it faces this way. Use your seal tool and press it in all the way. And now we're ready to install the bearings. We use the same tool, but flip it over, use this side, and press it in until the bottom's out. And the other bearing, we'll put in the same way. Use the same tool, press it in until it bottoms out. Now we're ready to reinstall our shaft and rotor assembly. You'll want to use a bearing tool to support your bearing. Make sure that the rotor and shaft are clean of any dirt or debris. Reinstall it with the keyway facing up. You want to press it into the seal and then press it all the way through the bearing. Now we're ready to install the o-ring and rollers. To put the o-ring on you want to hold on to one side and stretch it out, push it into the groove, make sure that it's clean of any debris. And the rollers also have to be clear of any debris. There's a very tight tolerance inside of the pumps and any foreign matter in there will lock up the pump when we push it together. Now we're ready to reinstall the other half of the pump. Here again, make sure that everything is clean of any debris or dirt. Push that through the seal and then you'll want to line up the weep holes on both castings. Support your top bearing and press it together. Now that we've pressed the pump back together, before you put the bolts in, you'll want to make sure that it turns by hand. If it doesn't, then take it apart and clean everything again. You probably have a piece of a rag or some debris in there of some kind. If it turns freely, now we can put the bolts back in. You want to start them by hand. So you can make sure that they're all lined up. And then when you tighten them down, You'll want to go in a crisscross pattern instead of around in a circle so it draws together evenly. Check the pump again, see if it turns by hand. If it doesn't, then you'll need to adjust the shaft one way or another. To do that, you'll want to have a shaft from another pump or a bolt that you can use to, to put against the shaft and then give it a good wrap with a hammer. Check it again. That moved the entire assembly far enough for it to turn by hand. Now I put the dust covers back on. And that's it.